Now, welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Rolls Handbook. Today, it's a cold night in Chicago, and uh, just behind me, you see the uh, Thompson Building, and I want to take you on a little bit of a tour here, talking about uh, one of the architects uh, who is uh, responsible for this building, and you might also uh, recognize uh, his work from other places, like uh, Sony's uh, Potsdamer Plots, uh, the Veer uh, Towers uh, in Las Vegas, and also the uh, open pedestrian area at the Munich Airport. And his uh, name is Helmut Jan, and I want to talk a little bit about this building, its significance, and its overall uh, connection to the issue of uh, design and public space. So this particular video feature is focusing primarily on the James R. Thompson Center in Chicago, which was built, uh, opened in 1985, and again uh, by Helmut Jan. And uh, I chose this building because I found it incredibly alluring, uh, attractive, um, incredible in, in so many respects. And as I researched um, the history of the building a bit more, uh, I became somewhat dismayed. What I discovered was that, and I'll get to some of this later in the video as well, um, people found the exterior of the building to be uh, ugly, the interior as well. Um, you also read numerous, numerous uh, stories and websites uh, that detail issues with the building, everything from uh, infestations of mice and bed bugs, uh, problems with uh, sunlight uh, heating up some of the top uh, offices uh, too much uh, in the summer. Um, also, uh, you know, images on the internet of uh, carpet uh, that's uh, worn and so forth, uh, discussion of uh, some of the colors chosen for the exterior of the building in terms of the blue and the red. Now it's kind of interesting to offer these criticisms because of course any architect, any architectural firm who might design a space uh, certainly may not have control over the construction of the space, uh, the contractors, the subcontractors, and so forth. Uh, later I'll talk about the fate of the Harmon Hotel in Vegas, which is next to another Jan uh, creation, marvelous creation of the Veer Towers. In that case as well, uh, can we really fault uh, the architect or do we have to fault uh, the construction teams, the contractors, and so forth. So I think it's an interesting uh, series of criticisms that have been leveled uh, against this particular building. Um, but uh, we'll be getting into a discussion of some of those specifics later in this video. And I also want to then offer an overview of some of Jan's other architectural uh, features. And I think you'll begin to see some parallels, particularly in terms of the open atrium structure at the Thompson Center and similar structures, specifically the airport terminal, the Munich International Airport, and the world famous Sony Potsdamer Platz in Berlin. And we can now take a look at an exterior shot of the uh, Thompson Building. And indeed later I'll give you some additional views um, and give you an opportunity to take a look at uh, what I think is a, a rather remarkable building. And as I've said, for all the negative attention that's been given to um, Jan's uh, Thompson Center, um, there is a lot of positive um, uh, offerings on the web as well. And one um, source I recommend is Wendy Bright's piece in Crane's Chicago Business uh, that talks about the fate of the Thompson Center and um, some of Jan's ideas for how the building might be repurposed in the future as there has been discussion of a pending sale, if not demolition, of this very uh, controversial building uh, in Chicago. And so besides the Thompson Center, I wanted to look at a, a series of interesting buildings and projects that Jan's architectural firm has been involved with. And um, I think you have to begin with the Vera Towers in Las Vegas. Um, so many people, I think, are impressed by just the uh, structure here, these uh, dramatic parallelograms that um, appear you know, to be leaning, um, indeed are leaning, and you, and you look at the, the construction um, and some of these images here and just how these towers complement city center. And of course, city center is so famous for the many star architects, uh, ranging from uh, Daniel Liebeskin to Cesar Pelli, uh, Maya Lin's uh, sculpture and so many other uh, pieces of art throughout city center within the Ari and so forth. And so certainly um, Jan as a world-class architect is among many other 
great architects. And I think what's so exciting about Sydney Setter is the contrast you get between uh, these different styles. And of course, we shouldn't forget uh, Norman Foster and the unfortunate hotel that over the years has been uh, imploded, which was a, a part of the um, basically became a billboard, uh, the Harmon Hotel became a billboard for. Uh, the aria. Um, so certainly not all successes and that was not uh, the fault of Foster but uh, you know perhaps the uh, construction firm that had the task of uh, creating the building. But getting back to the Veer Towers I think you see that as we go through some of his other projects the focus on natural light, uh, the focus on glass, on using the sun as an element in part of the design um, is really quite remarkable. And as you may know about City Center, one of the big um, issues was creating LEED certified buildings. And so certainly that was also uh, a challenge. Um, I was also reading an article in Arc Daily about um, the Veer Towers talking about how these structures signify since such a sense of dynamism in terms of their placement among the other uh, dramatic buildings in city center. And I would argue that these towers perhaps uh, stand out uh, the most as iconic structures along with Leviskin's Crystals uh, Shopping Center, also a part of city center. Okay, next we come to Helmut Jahn's work from uh, 1987, the O'Hare uh, United Tunnel. Um, and if you've ever been through O'Hare Airport, you perhaps have noticed this. Um, you know, likely it's it's one of these transitional liminal type spaces that perhaps um, you didn't notice as you would uh, one of his other spaces. Um, the sculpture in the middle at the top there by Michael Hayden, and you'll note that it's a actually pretty um, short distance. Um, it's a pretty low ceiling, so it's pretty remarkable thinking about how um, this particular space was uh, created. And it looks like on this particular day, some people are rushing to get to the next flight, and it's certainly something you've maybe experienced at O'Hare uh, from time to time if you're trying to get from one end of the airport to the other. Um, there's a really good interview I uh, recommend on YouTube with Helmut Jan, and he specifically talks about the concept behind this space. Again, I think I would say very liminal in design, but very specifically, he said he wanted to create an interior landscape, and he wanted to create a space that people would actually enjoy going through. And I think this makes it quite remarkable when you think about the fact that so often uh, going into an airport, um, you know, going through an airport, you don't want to be there in the first place. Um, so very interesting in that sense of trying to say, can you create something that um, perhaps people would actually enjoy going through? So um, I think we could say, you know, it's, it's a very uh, successful space and uh, really a world famous space in terms of an interior landscape that is situated within an airport space proper. And just uh, before I forget, I wanted to mention, I was uh, discussing um, Jan's uh, processes and, and one of his videos specific to the O'Hare uh, terminal space. I do recommend, uh, go to his main website. It's www.jahn-us.com. And uh, pictured here is one of many videos in which he discusses the uh, process behind his work. Um, and specifically, you might want to click on media and you can get some insights about his design. And I think you'll see it quite fascinating uh, to hear from such a world uh, class architect discussing his uh, conceptual approach to many of the projects um, and spaces that I'm discussing in this video today. Okay, next we come to Helmut Jahn's um, Sony Center in Berlin, um, opened in 2000. And uh, for me, this is a, a very unique and uh, special uh, space, uh, a place that I had a chance to visit on two occasions, once uh, after the Cold War and, and the fall of the wall, and uh, essentially a very desolate landscape, and then a second time here, uh, in the last couple years in which I had the opportunity to see this new vision 
of uh, Potsdamer Platz at the Sony Center. And as you can see, you have this dramatic atrium umbrella type structure, all the natural sunlight coming in. What I want to do in just a second here is to show you a comparison of the top of the Sony Center in Berlin with the top of the atrium inside the Thompson Center. So I've superimposed these here together to give you a sense of, again, that unique perspective that Jan brings to uh, all of his, uh, many of his architectural um, spatial projects. And this is an image here on the occasion of my visit, enjoying a Starbucks and a morning pastry. And I just really enjoyed my time um, in this space, in this giant atrium that combines the interior and the, the exterior in terms of uh, nature and culture. And this is a shot of just outside um, Sony Potsdamer plot. So you really do get the sense as you're inside the space of this encapsulation of really a small community and I think in a lot of his other projects he does play with this ability to create landscapes uh, on the inside uh, as we saw in the case of the O'Hare Airport uh, United Terminal as well. And we can close out this look at the uh, Sony Center at Potsdamer Platz which is Additional appreciation, I think, of just the structure here. Again, what is uh, so exciting to me about much of his work, whether it's the Thompson Center, or in a second I'll show you the Munich Airport Center, or in this case, the Sony Potsdamer Platz, um, is this fact of creating this interior space that is so vibrant and exciting. It really does suggest a, a courtyard type space that through the use of sunlight and lighting and openness and you know, rather postmodern and uh, mo rather postmodern futuristic type architecture, creating a space that has its own distinctive appeal. And so for me, a space like the Sony Center is so incredibly exciting just because of all that it entails as it encloses us, really envelops us in its own excitement uh, of space. And one of Jan's final projects to look at before we return to the Thompson Center in Chicago is uh, the, his uh, interior space here uh, at the Munich Airport Center, um, opened in 1999. And you'll have to apologize. Um, during my visit uh, through the Munich Airport on a couple of occasions in 2015, I was just basically passing through, and so I took very brief um, images here. You can find another video actually. They had an interesting, just to the left, an interesting um, uh, space where they had uh, uh, surfing basically. Um, surfing here just under the atrium. But the point I wanted to make about the building, um, as you can see the structure here, is I think you'll begin to see a close resemblance to two other spaces we've looked at. One, of course, is the Thompson Center. Think the atrium on the inside with all of the sunlight, the glass, the metal. And then the second one was the Sony Potsdamer plots, which we just had the opportunity to take a look at. So again, when you begin to see the work of an astonishing architect like Helmut Jahn, uh, you begin to recognize, just as you do a great artist in your museum, that same style being repeated over and over again. And as I said earlier, I encourage you to look at some of his design processes and some of the videos that explain his approach to his work because this really does give you that sense um, of an artist, of an architect at work, and how he approaches these very dramatic landscapes in these very different places around the world, but nonetheless that share in some unifying factors. And I think you begin to see this uh, here in the example at the Munich International Airport. Okay, and then I thought we would return to where we began, um, Jan's 1985 um, Thompson Center. And uh, again, this is in uh, Chicago uh, on Randolph Street. And uh, if you haven't been there, this houses the uh, Illinois State Government Building um, offices. And as I mentioned earlier, as you can see from uh, the image here, some criticism was applied to some of the uh, paint, um, the design, uh, as far as the colors chosen. Um, also over time people complained that the building began to have a rather worn uh, appearance to it both on the exterior and also on the interior. 
And you can see here the uh, sculpture by uh, Jean Dubuffet, and certainly um, a lot of artwork um, on the exterior and also the interior of the building. And um, I think you get a sense uh, from this photo of just how this building dominates uh, this uh, section here, very near the theater district in Chicago. And uh, I like this shot because it does show you how um, attractive the architecture is in, ter in terms of the use of the windows and the mirroring effect that you get from some of the other um, buildings uh, in the vicinity. And for me, I think what's exciting about the Thompson Center is the atrium on the interior. And it's so marvelous if you get a chance to, to visit Chicago, and hopefully this space will be preserved, to just gaze upon the elevator here, to look up at the top, at the ceiling, to see the remarkable structure. Again, that reminds us of other places that he's designed, like Potsdamer Plots and the Munich uh, Airport Center. We can also appreciate the fact that, not unlike the Reichstag building in Berlin, because of the fact that we have so many of these government office uh, spaces open, to the sun, open to the public, we get the sense of civics and process. And just below all those offices uh, in the bottom floors are a number of shops. And just below those shops uh, is the entrance to Chicago's uh, famous underground pedestrian walkway, which is so useful for many people during the cold, winter, brutal months uh, in Chicago. So again, for me, it's this atrium space that really designates uh, this building, in my mind, as one of the great buildings uh, I don't particularly care what the critics say. Uh, I think something has been missed in not realizing the conceptual uh, design behind this space. And also, what I would argue is the, the radical beauty, the radical postmodern beauty of this particular space that parallels the beauty of many of Jan's other similar spaces. So I wanted to close this look today at the work of Helmut Jahn and specifically the Thompson Center in Chicago with this image of the atrium, the inside of the Thompson Center. I think for me it encapsulates the significance of his approach to architecture, his ability to create these dramatic uh, spaces that have a very public nature to them, his ability to use sunlight in so many dramatic ways. Uh, and overall, I think it gives you the sense of this significance the great significance of one of the world's uh, most marvelous architects here shown in all the grandeur and excitement uh, inside the Thompson Center in Chicago. I hope you enjoyed this video feature today here in Chicago and please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.